Hey everybody, it's 9 o'clock and 9 o'clock is with me, Father Warner. We are in Saturday of the ninth week in ordinary time. Our text is taken from Mark chapter 12, verse 38 to 44. And I've entitled today's teaching, Learning to Give from the Heart. So let's read the text first. As he thought, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogue and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses, and for the sake of appearances, they say long prayers. They will receive a greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put everything she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, we are at the end of the Gospel of Mark. The following texts focus uh, that you'll see in chapter 14 will focus on our Lord's passion, death and resurrection. From Monday, uh, day after tomorrow, we will begin with the ministry of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. We'll go straight to chapter 5 and then we'll study Matthew chapter 5. I'm good. I've done it before, but I'm going to give it a new perspective. But for now, we bring our teaching on the Gospel of Mark to a close, even though if you look the chapter itself will continue to see Jesus teaching in the temple. Now, they say that there is a threshold for everything and the patience of our Lord seems to have been breached. Not only has he had to deal with the shenanigans of the Jewish religious establishment, but he, as we saw, also had to deal with their political allies, the Herodians who came to attack him. Now, scripture tells us that having dealt with them all, no one dared to ask him any more questions. And you'll see that in verse uh, 34 of chapter 12. Now, while that may be true, that no one dared to ask him any more questions, it did not imply that they did not have questions about him. And we saw that in yesterday's teaching, verses 35 to 37. Now, much of Jesus' ministry was under a constant scanner because you see, Jesus posed a threat to the Jewish religious leadership who saw him as enemy number one. You know, when truth, my dear friends, stands in the path of falsehood and deceit, every effort is made then to eradicate the truth, lest those who see the truth begin to question the world they have been made to accept and to live in. We know that truth has a name. It is Jesus. Jesus declared, I am the way, I am the truth, I am, I am the life. Yet, the truth, Jesus our Lord, had to be eradicated, even if it meant that a brother Jew was sold to the Romans and nailed to a cross. Yet our Lord had no malice towards his detractors. From the cross, he asked his father to forgive them. Yet on earth, he does what he ought to do. And that is today he warns his disciples lest they fall prey to the falsehood of the Jewish religious leaders. So we hear that warning in today's text. He says, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplace and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at a banquet. Now, ironically, the Jews thought that they were watching Jesus. They were waiting, as we know, for him to make a mistake. But in reality, if you read this text, it was Jesus who was watching them, and he was watching them very intently. He observes their behavior and their clamor for importance and power. But even more, he ob observes the immorality of their actions when they spare none, not even the widows who we are told in, they were, the widows were protected by the law of Moses. So the very keepers of the law had now become its violators because they, we are told, swallow up, they devour widows' houses. 
but they would like to say very very long prayers for the sake of appearances. Now it is in this context that our Lord notices a widow who was poor, we are told she was poor and she puts in two small copper coins worth a penny. Now the ancient Greek word lepton for these two small copper coins uh, or a copper coin, lepton literally means a tiny thing. And so in the old English you would remember this was translated as a mite from um, you also heard of this parable as the widow's mite and from this word lepton comes the word um, that we use for a crumb or a very small morsel uh, translated as lepton. Now interestingly Jesus did not say that she put in more than any one of them. He said she put in more than all of them, all of them put together. They, all those who put in money, Jesus says, put out of their abundance, but she put all she had to live on. Now what the widow gave might seem insignificant to many from the viewpoint of quantity. However, she is praised for her total generosity in giving all that she had, not just what was over and above. Jesus, my dear friends, looks at us too when we give and he notices how we give. As Jesus looks, he is more interested in how we give than how much we give. In seeing how the people gave, Jesus wasn't studying technique. He looks more at motive. Jesus looks at our heart. The story of the poor widow is very suitable for contemplation for you and me today. We can approach this narrative in two ways. We can approach it either, either as a viewer, like the disciples did, they watched this widow, they watched the scene unfold, or today we can make a choice. We can picture ourselves in the place of the widow. I want to thank you for today for your generosity for our children's home here in Nouvelle. I want to say that before I left um, St. Stephen's, I had a visitor from a lady, and I know she watches this. Um, I, I can't get her name, but she stays either in Vasai or Virar in Mumbai. And she traveled on a Sunday all the way across to St. Stephen's to give me a small little square envelope which said, for the girl's home. And she said to me, this is all I have to give. And I remember giving it to Lenny as soon as I reached Goa. I pulled out all the envelopes and I pointed out to this one and I said, Lenny, this came, this is truly the widow's might. I know that many of you have been extremely generous. Uh, we have received donations in lakhs of rupees uh, from friends of mine, from complete strangers, towards the girl's home. And I know that each one of these donations have come from great love, from great kindness. You are making possible a dream for children and giving them a great future. And I want to thank you. I know many of you have never seen our home. I want to welcome you. Of course, I've said very, very often that when you are coming, please let us know because school has begun. The children, as of yesterday, have, as of a few days ago, have begun going to school. And so we need to balance their lives too. We can't constantly disrupt it with uh, guests because guests also take time. So do let us know. We'd be happy to have you here and for you to be involved in some way or the other. And for many, many of you who continue to give us your widow's might, I want to say thank you and may the Lord bless you. Bye for now. Don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends.